Now video this week is thanks to the amazing team at Outdoor Aussie Adventure Tours. They supply you with the car, they supply you with the caravan and the itinerary and you just get out there and have an amazing time. So a huge thanks to Sharon and Ro for having us. If you watched our first episode you will know we are having an absolute belter of a time. Hello and welcome back to the little grey box. It's Phoebe here with Matt behind the camera and on this channel we share with you all our experiences and tips to help you travel well. And in this episode we are in Australia, in Queensland because we are doing our first ever caravan road trip from the Gold Coast up to Rainbow Beach and back. Now over this series we are covering roughly 800 kilometers or 500 miles as we take our caravan and we explore some of Queensland's iconic country towns, beautiful coastal spots and just some stunning scenery along the way. We got 10 miles of open road Good to go. Now, in our first episode, we were able to do a bit of a road trip from the Gold Coast through Esk and up here to Tin Cam Bay. And this morning, we are picking things back up with a visit to the Tin Cam Bay Dolphin Center, also called Barnacles. She's dancing, singing out to every song, and she's always got all of the lyrics wrong, but she don't mind it. Welcome to uh, the Barnacles Dolphin Feeding Centre. You've got a lovely day and you're lucky to have a reasonably small crowd and three adult dolphins and one calf. Even though the bachelor of the Guppy Guppy tribe used the dolphins to, to assist in their fishing activities, in about 1950 an injured dolphin came into the bay which was looked after by the local fishermen. It went back into the sandy strait and then it started to bring in other dolphins because it was getting fed. And that's how the activity started. Yeah? Now it's really well organised, the volunteers do an amazing job. So you will line up out the front, you do need to check in at the moment. You have different groups where you'll come through and you'll have some time down on the beach. Then you come back up to the cafe, chill out for a little bit, maybe grab a coffee. Then it's time to line up and do your feeding. And the feeding is fantastic. It's one fish per person. Obviously they monitor how much fish they're feeding the dolphins so they are not overfed. Put your hand in the water, don't touch them of course, they're not pets. <laughs> and then they will gently take the fish off you and they will swallow that hole. And it's just a fantastic experience. We really, really enjoyed it. We got to feed the car. Matt and I had actually tried to do this many, many years ago. What, like 10 years ago maybe? And I don't think it had this same amazing system that they had set up today because we couldn't get anywhere near them 10 years ago. And today it was just seamless. So absolutely would recommend. Oh, oh, good to go. We're staying here at the Tinkan Bay Tourist Park and the location is fantastic. Got up early, went for a run this morning right along the Esplanade and it is really easy to get around from here. Cheryl, who checked us in yesterday, she is an absolute riot. She had so much local information. She was marking spots on the map for us, really helping us find our way around. And her husband, he was lovely. He helped us reverse in and I really want to champion this message to you guys and say if you are doing this for the first time like we are, don't let your pride or your ego get in the way, you know, just ask for help. That's what we're doing, you know, we're trying to pretend we know how to do everything and we know how to reverse and we'll be big heroes and we'll show everyone how good we are. We've no idea what we're doing. So <laughs> feel free to embrace that and tell everybody that you meet that you have no idea what you're doing and that's how you're going to learn. That's how we're learning. Lovely people who are taking the time to come over and slow down the pace and teach us. Now the park where we're staying is fantastic. They have lots of different sites and they have some great facilities too. They've got a pool over there, We've got some camp kitchens I saw earlier. Um, we are staying at a site that has an ensuite. This isn't something I've experienced before when we were camping or even motorhoming in New Zealand. So you pull up and then you have your own little bathroom there. So we have a toilet and a shower and there's space to hang your stuff up there. So you can wake up in the dead of the night like I did and just go to the toilet. It is right there, right behind you. Now we were really hungry after our dolphin feeding experience because we were up super super early to do that um, and there are some great spots you can eat at around Tin Bay if you want but Matt and I were craving crumpets and coffee. Minor figures please sponsor me I'm your number one fan. Amazing just stops us having to bother around with um, making coffee and clean up after coffee it's just you know long life ready to go throw it in the fridge oat milk latte it is so good. Set among the 
Tin Can Inlet, it is easy to see why Tin Can Bay is considered a tranquil getaway destination and a haven for bird watchers, fishermen, sailing and cruising. Now it's bordered by the Great Sandy Strait, a pristine waterway that is protected by World Heritage listed Fraser Island Kagari. If you are a bird watcher, you are absolutely going to love it here. You can spot up to 140 different species and some of those are rare shorebirds. Some of these birds are traveling over 25,000 kilometers to get here. That's pretty impressive. And along here on the Esplanade, they have some fantastic little signs set up to help you do a bit of bird watching if you aren't experienced. Spotted a local banana bird. There it is. Very impressive. It's that time of the episode. Op shop roulette. <laughs> We're driving past the Tin Can Bay op shop over here. It looks like we've got some great books, if nothing else. Um, this could be anything. This could actually be anything. Could be a gold mine, could be a total and complete bust. I'll see you in five minutes. Only one way to find out. Good luck. Thanks, babe. Enjoy. Success. I got a dress, but there's no try-ons. It's really cute in there. There's like grannies and they're sitting around having tea and biscuits, cash only. Um, Three dollars for a dress, so I guess I'll have to try it on back at the campsite and hope it fits. If not, my sister's in for one. But um, great in there. Great books. Some really cool vintage stuff. Definitely recommend. Oh, I wanna stay right here, right here, chilling with my friends for another year. I would walk away from the spotlight for the good life. place that is very very special to Matt and I. This is Rainbow Beach. Uh, we have been coming here for well, over 10 years together so this is one of our favorite places to come in Queensland. It is one of our favorite holiday spots and trust me when I say we have done it all. From luxury and accommodation with incredible views to camping with mates down on the beach at Inskip Point and holiday houses and everything in between and it has been amazing to watch this town grow over the years. When we first started coming up there wasn't much here and coming back this year wow the place is growing there is so many different cafes some great new bars over there and this place truly comes alive during the holidays but if you want to plan your visit for those kind of quieter periods you definitely want to visit outside of those school holiday times like now when it is a little bit more quiet still super laid back and relaxing and so many really beautiful spots to visit that we are going to show you around today and this afternoon we're going to get to do something we have wanted to do for years for lunch we have come here to little parliament which is on the main street here in rainbow beach and this place wasn't here the last time we visited they are delivering the most delicious oat milk iced lattes and the menu is just so good they have some really great options matt is still feeling breakfasty um he's going double breakfast today so he's got their scrambled eggs on a beautiful piece of sourdough i'm going for something a little bit lighter um i've got their roast pumpkin salad and it looks amazing you know we film these things and they're going to be on the internet forever somebody's going to screenshot at this at one point or another it's going to be embarrassing but here we go mm. it was really tasty um really really good really fresh good char in the pumpkin and that dressing is awesome really kind of um citrusy and tangy not too oily not too heavy absolutely delicious So we're on the freshwater track, um, about 4 k's out of town and we've got to get through this to get to the other side, which is whatever the other side is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and from there it's 7 k's back towards Rainbow Beach along the beach to the lighthouse. Shaz and Mo also gave us a ton of information before we came out here on driving around tide times which is really important. They looked up what time it was, low tide was that day and just gave us our window of time and said that's when you really want to be heading out there. Matt is dropping it down to 20 and then we are going to get out there on the soft sand. Matt and I are both so 
very excited. This is something we have been wanting to do for years. This is like a life travel bucket list moment and it does not disappoint. Now behind me we can see something really really cool. We have the coloured sands. These are a famous part of Rainbow Beach and we have never been able to visit before. Now apparently these have been forming since the last ice age. There are around 72 different colours and they tower over us about 80 metres high and they are just staggering. pretty far away you guys and this is amazing the water is the perfect temperature now it is unpatrolled so Matt and I are making sure we're very careful we're only staying in quite shallow and cooling off but oh my gosh we're so lucky to live here this is so beautiful Samlo is not just one of our favorite spots in Rainbow Beach, it's one of our favorite spots in Queensland and it's a place I love to take our friends when they visit from overseas. Now I would personally recommend that you get up there for sunrise which you watch on this side of the beach where we are now and you get to see the sun come up and the world comes alive and then you should absolutely watch the sunset as well. You get to watch that sunset over Tin Can Bay. Now there is a car park that you drive up to and there's a walk through the bush. A word of warning, do not go in the middle of the day. It's going to be too hot, you're going to get sunburnt and it's actually quite tiring working, walking on all that soft sand. So definitely plan your visits for earlier or later in the day. Good morning you guys! Wow, what can I say about yesterday? It was unbelievably fun. I cannot believe how good that was. That was an incredible day. Um, now Matt and I kind of thought we'll go down there and we'll have a really fun time and then we'll get off the beach while the sun's still up. But we were just having so much fun we couldn't leave. <laughs> So we actually ended up staying pretty much the entire window of time we had either side of high tide and we were driving out through the bush in the dark. We had the windows down, amazing cool breeze coming through. We just had some music playing, taking our time, working back out to the main road and that drive was fantastic. Um, when we got back into Rainbow Beach we went and did their full car wash so they have an underbody car wash which is great for something like this Jeep just gets all of that sand and salt and everything out of it so did that and then we headed back to the caravan park in Tinkamp Bay and we were exhausted. We were both just so tucked out. So we are driving now out of Tinkamp Bay back to Gympie because we're doing something really cool this morning and that drive time is going to take us around 40 minutes but again we are just taking it really slow um, and I'm here to humble brag because guess who shaved off nearly 10 minutes of their pack down time Woo -hoo! so uh, you might recall from the last episode I think it took us around 23 minutes to pack down the whole rig today it took 14 minutes uh, we were a well-oiled machine we knew what we were doing so if you have any doubts if you're like I don't know if I could do that I don't know if I could reverse a trailer I don't know if I could pack down a caravan and set it up I have no idea what I'm doing we don't have any idea what we're doing and we did it and we're doing better and better every single day you learn as you go you take it slow and you ask for help that's all you need to do and you'll get through it Right, you guys, we are going to enjoy this drive. This Jeep is super, super comfortable. Um, and we will see you in Gympie for a fun little historical experience. This is the base of pure excitement because we are doing the Mary Valley Rattler. Now, I've heard about it a lot, but I've never done it. Um, and now that I'm here, I just can't seem to contain myself. It's so glamorous and old world. I can't wait to be on there. I can't wait to have this like old world moment and just enjoy the whole experience. So uh, we are in for a treat. 
We have got VIP tickets. We are going to be able to experience the club car and the first class seating. And uh, yeah, oh, I can't quite contain myself. This is going to be great. It's so elegant. <laughs> I feel like Great Gatsby without the. No, this is a spoiler, but he dies. Seems I'm at the end I don't know what I believe Through the cloud I see your hand Reaching down to guide me That was so good. I cannot quite put my finger on what it is about traveling by a train like that. It is just so elegant and classic and classy. That was just such an amazing experience. Now we are only at the halfway point because we are doing the classic Rattler experience return from Gimby to Amamore. So we're going to spend about an hour here in Amamore while they spin the train around which is a really cool thing to see. I've never seen anything like that before. Now like I said earlier, Shaz and Ro from Outdoorsy Adventures, they are planning everything for us so they were able to book this for us, tell us what time to be here and everything we needed to know to have this experience. chicken is craft. One thing I would say, the train was pretty packed, so there was a lot of people who came here for lunch, so even though we pre-ordered, we did have to wait 40 minutes to get food. So if you are prone to bouts of hunger like me, pack a snack, or max out on the cheese platters that we had on board, or something like that. So this is like a peanut satay kind of a dressing, I believe. We've got some roast veggies in there, lots of good grains. Um, yum. Welcome to Noosa. Now it is a little overcast this afternoon, but we made it. And the drive time from Gympie was around about, I want to say 40 minutes or so. It wasn't that long at all and it was fine towing the caravan. No issues whatsoever. If you can, if you are thinking about booking this, you should absolutely try and do this kind of a trip ahead of time. And that was something Shaz said to us when we were organizing things with her. She said because of that lead time, she had maybe four weeks in advance, she was able to book the best spots at the best caravan parks. So that is something to keep in mind. You definitely want to have that long lead time so you don't miss out because they are super, super popular and you want to get those primo positions. Trust me. Having them take care of everything has also been fantastic. Every day we kind of pull out our daily itinerary. Everything is there for us. We know where we have to be. We have all our confirmations and all of the information we need. And there's just no hassle. And Matt was saying that from a guy's point of view, he felt like this kind of thing would just be an awesome present. Something he could give to me without messing it up. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, choosing where we stay and choosing the accommodation and choosing the activities. That it would all just be taken care of and it would be an amazing adventure. And that has been exactly what it has been for us and I think that is everything from this episode it has been a massive one both Matt and I are exhausted we're gonna cook up some veggie burgers and get an early night's sleep because tomorrow we are doing something we have never done here before in Noosa that brings this week's episode to a close I really hope you've enjoyed it now if you don't already be sure to subscribe right now so you never miss a single episode and say hello in the comments below I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you with our brand new episode next week Love ya.